I'm now going to continue my coverage of the University of Minnesota Marijuana Research Study. And this time we're going to be talking about verbal learning and memory. Both the control group and the marijuana group did very well on the digit span test. What does that mean? That means that marijuana people, marijuana users, okay, they could recall important telephone numbers or driver's license numbers, or social security numbers, or computer passwords. They could do a very good job of doing that. So really there was no difference when it came to recalling important numbers, whether it be the control group or the marijuana users, they both could do it just as well. So that's still not the problem. So what's the problem? Well, do you remember a test entitled, hang on, let me bring it up here, and the test is called the Ray Auditory Verbal Learning Test. Do you remember that one? Where they were orally, the, these participants were orally read uh, entire lists of words. Do you remember that? This is where we start having a problem. Because the marijuana people, the marijuana users, did worse on that test than the control group. What does that mean? Well, it means that if a marijuana user went grocery shopping, there'd be a very good chance he'd have to be checking his grocery list on a regular basis because he'd probably forget the things he would actually need to buy at the grocery store. And he said, well, what? that's no big deal. Even normal people bring a grocery list. Well, that's true. That's fine. But what if your employer gave you a task list? Okay, this would be an entire list of tasks that he wanted you to do over a specific period of time. Well, the marijuana users would have a harder time remembering that list than a control group user. Now that becomes a problem. See what I mean? Now what if you're a delivery driver? I don't care if you're delivering flowers or packages or whatnot. And you were given a list of places you needed to drop things off at. Well, the marijuana users would have to constantly refer to the list because they wouldn't be able to retain it for lengthy periods of time. A control group would probably be able to do that quite nicely, but not a marijuana user. So that's a problem. What if they were truck drivers and they had to remember a specific route to get from their uh, point of origin to their destination? What if they couldn't do that? They could get lost on the highway. That would be bad. See what I mean? So it's stuff like that that creates some problems. What if you had to li remember a list of medications? So, well, they, most people write those down. Well, you could do that, or you could just remember it. Some people don't take that many medications, so it would be pretty easy for them to remember. The control group would probably do pretty good at recalling all the medications they're on. But not marijuana users. That just wouldn't happen. So, let's say we had a married couple. And the wife had a to-do list for her husband, and her husband was on marijuana. He probably wouldn't remember half the list, especially after a lengthy period of time. There you go. And you say, well, what, when does it really become important? Well, it becomes important as a, a crime scene. Let's say they're an eyewitness to a crime. Now they have to remember the sequence of events that happened at that crime, to give investigators all the information they need. Marijuana users are not going to be capable of doing that. You see what I mean? That's where you start having a problem. They say, well, people in, in a control group probably would have some of those same problems too, but not nearly as often as a marijuana user. And this test proves it. So you see, you see how problems can arise right off the bat? 
Anyway, if you want a more detailed explanation of all this, it's in the research paper. You can read it for yourself. Alright, I will tell you more in my next video. Stay tuned.